and what definition do you give to magic and how is it related to science, for example? Magic has no definition. Um, various attempts have been made to have one, have a really useful definition that people can use. There's even a huge book that's just dedicated to defining magic mm -hmm. for sociologists and people like that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come to a conclusion really either. Part of the problem is, is that magic means something different to everybody who's using it. Mm. Um, the ancient Egyptians, for example, considered magic the force that was behind the creation of the universe. Mm. So it becomes a thing that can be contacted, a god that can be contacted and talked to and used. In my earlier books, I described uh, magic as um, the art of becoming a co-creator with God, mm. which basically means that you are trying to change your universe by using divine powers or your own divine aspects. It's not the greatest of definitions. Um, as I've got older and more experienced, I realize that sometimes it isn't that at all. Mm. I think when you um, are playing with esoteric forces, you tend to think some things are magical when they're not, and other things aren't magical when they are. I mean, Alistair Crowley, for example, his definition was the art of uh, magic is the art of um, transforming consciousness. Mm. Yeah, that's not a bad. Um, definition in some ways because magic involves transforming consciousness. You have to transform your consciousness to access magic, but yes. it's not the actual act of changing um, changing consciousness. Um, otherwise, sleeping would be a magical act, and it clearly isn't because there is no question of you transforming anything. Um, so, it's not a satisfactory answer. <laughs> when you ask what's it got to do with science, I don't think it has much to do with science at all. Modern occultists have done their level best to try and make magic fit with science and scientific theories, and I've never been entirely satisfied with the results. Magic is a sort of science, but it's a personal science. It disobeys the rules of um, scientific law because mm. a ritual for uh, for, a, for a magic to be scientific it would need to be repeatable you'd be always a person would be would do one thing and it would always get the same result yes if it didn't get the same result then it doesn't uphold scientific theory mm. and i have done 10 rituals if i've done 10 rituals um and two of them don't work or don't um, get a result the way I wanted to, then it proves that it's, it, it can't follow scientific theory. But if I'm doing um, 10 rituals and I have an 80% success rate as a magician, I think that's pretty damn impressive. So, no, I think the two um, approaches to reality are different. Mm -hmm. um, you can use some of the scientific mm -hmm. techniques or ideas or mm -hmm. uh, methods, mm -hmm. but it's really just window dressing for something that is completely and utterly irrational. Mm. Yes. Today, there are many theories of psychology. What is the relation that you find between magic and current psychology? Israel Regardi mentions Carl Jung in his books, for example. 